The Triassic was a critical time in vertebrate evolution. It is regarded as the birth of modern ecosystems, as successful living groups such as mammals, turtles, and archosaurs arose in the aftermath of the devastating Permo-Triassic extinction, which killed off many primitive reptile and amphibian groups. The list of vertebrates that arose during the Triassic is staggering. Dinosaurs, crocodilomorphs, pterosaurs, mammals, turtles, ichthyosaurs, and frogs. The Triassic, which stretched from 250 to 200 million years ago, was a time of transition. Archaic groups that had dominated Permian ecosystems, such as many mammal-like reptiles, had faded into extinction, and the arid, Triassic Pangaea was the perfect breeding ground for entirely new groups of vertebrates, many of which remain successful today. The Permo-Triassic extinction was the greatest catastrophe in Earth's history up to 95% of all species became extinct after volcanic eruptions poisoned the atmosphere. Among the departed were several groups of terrestrial, land-living, vertebrates, most notably many synapsids, mammal-like reptiles, insect-eating reptiles, and fish-eating amphibians. In the aftermath, many of the world's ecosystems were barren. The evolutionary clock had been reset and new groups had the opportunity to evolve, expand, and dominate. Within the first few million years of the extinction, ecosystems remained in disarray and a few vertebrates spread across the globe. These so-called disaster taxa, such as Lystrosaurus, were well equipped to withstand a toxic world because they were ecological generalists that could withstand a variety of climates. However, as the atmosphere returned to normal, ecosystems stabilized and major groups like the dinosaurs appeared. The archosaurs, or ruling reptiles, include living birds and crocodilians, along with a range of extinct groups restricted to the Mesozoic, such as the dinosaurs. Archosaurs originated approximately 245 million years ago and quickly spread across the globe, diversifying into an array of different species, which generally can be divided into two groups based on the anatomy of the ankle. The bird-like archosaurs, which include dinosaurs, have a straight hinge joint between the ankle bones and the foot, a mesotarsal ankle, which allows for rapid locomotion. However, the crocodile-line archosaurs have a ball and socket joint between the astragalus and calcaneum bones of the ankle, a crurotarsal ankle. This joint allows the two bones to rotate against each other, which offered a degree of maneuverability but prevented most crocodile-line archosaurs from attaining high speed. Dinosaurs are the most familiar of the extinct archosaur groups and are closely related to the flying pterosaurs. The earliest known dinosaurs appeared at the beginning of the late Triassic, approximately 230 million years ago. Dinosaurs quickly diversified into an array of different body forms, but it took them much longer to multiply into a large number of species and to become exceptionally abundant in individual ecosystems. The most primitive dinosaurs, such as Herrerasaurus and Eoraptor, were sleek, bipedal predators boasting, ischium an arsenal of serrated teeth and sharp claws. From these small carnivorous ancestors, dinosaurs proceeded to divide into two major groups, the Saurischians and the Ornithischians. The Saurischians, which include the predatory theropods and the long-necked sauropodomorphs, possess a lizard hip, in which the pubis bone points forwards. The Ornithischians, or bird-hip dinosaurs, have a modified pelvis in which the pubis points backward, as in living birds. However, in one of the greatest ironies in paleontology modern birds evolved from theropod dinosaurs. Canistrophius must rank among the most bizarre reptiles of all time instantly recognizable by its outsized, noodle-like neck that was longer than its body and tail combined. This extraordinary neck was more than 934 feet, 3 meters, long about twice the height of an average man yet Tenostrophius possessed only 10 greatly elongated cervical vertebrae to support it. A semi-aquatic animal that fed primarily on fish, Tenostrophius could capture fish in the murky waters of the seashore by rapidly extending its neck. This strategy allowed it to take fish while its body remained completely still in some cases while it stood on dry land. Following the Permo-Triassic mass extinction, entirely new groups of organisms emerged. One of these was Proterosuchus, a Komodo dragon-sized predator that is a distant cousin of the archosaurs the large group that contains birds, crocodiles, and dinosaurs. The skull of Proterosuchus was long and narrow, with enlarged eye sockets and numerous small, curved teeth. The body was also long and thin, with a flexible, tapering tail. It is likely that Proterosuchus alternated between living on land and in the water, giving it unparalleled access to a range of prey. Although quite small even by today's standards, Proterosuchus was among the largest carnivores of its day. Reptile-like cousins of mammals, were some of the most successful herbivores of the late Permian to Middle Triassic periods. One of the last surviving members of this once great group was Placerius. 
resembling an ancient hippopotamus. Placerius reached weights of as much as 4,400 pounds, 2,000 kilograms. It lived approximately 220 million years ago in southwestern USA and was the largest herbivore in the region. Although it lived alongside early carnivorous dinosaurs, Placerius was such a successful plant eater that it was much more abundant than rival herbivores. Its skull was ornamented with two enormous tusks that were probably used for social display. Fossil discoveries suggest Placerius traveled in large herds. Thrinaxodon, a cat-sized predator, was the most common cynodon of the early Triassic. Like mammals, it had a distinct waist in front of its hips. In addition, its broad ribs interlocked with each other, stiffening its body and making it difficult to breathe via rib movement alone. This suggests that Thrinaxodon used a diaphragm to breathe, a more efficient method, and points to an evolving mammal-like metabolism and similar activity levels. Thrinaxodon's limbs were held almost under its body, as in mammals, and this further supports the suggestion that Thrinaxodon was an active animal, capable of running. The prosauropod Plateosaurus is one of the best understood dinosaurs. Most dinosaurs are known from only a few scraps of bone, or at most, a single skeleton, but Plateosaurus is represented by more than 50 complete skeletons. Most of these have come from the late Triassic basins of Germany, which were deposited 220 million years ago by a series of large rivers. Other specimens have turned up in the glacier-covered rocks of Greenland, and even in drill cores from the bottom of the North Sea. These specimens have allowed scientists to study this dinosaur in remarkable detail. Plateosaurus was one of the largest prosauropods, and some individuals were 33 feet, 10 meters, long and weighed 1,540 pounds, 700 kilograms. Its long mouth was crammed full of leaf-shaped teeth, and these were covered in rough bumps, denticles, that were perfect for grinding vegetation. It is likely that Plateosaurus could walk on either two or four legs, although recent research suggests that this animal's arms and hands were not very suitable for locomotion and instead were used mainly for collecting food. Its name means flat lizard. During an expedition to Argentina in the late 1980s, a scientist named Paul Sereno and his team came across a curious fossil. No larger than a small human child, this skeleton was clearly a dinosaur, with an open hip socket, an enlarged muscle attachment on the upper arm bone, humerus, and other characteristic features. In many ways it resembled a carnivorous theropod because of its sharp teeth, killer claws, and the ability to walk on two hind legs, bipedal gait. Sereno and his colleagues named this dinosaur Eoraptor, one of the most primitive dinosaurs ever found. It lived about 228 million years ago. Dinosaurs began to dominate in the Jurassic. Although dinosaurs originated about 30 million years earlier, it was only after the Triassic-Jurassic extinction of 200 million years ago that they became the top land vertebrates across the world. Meanwhile, in the seas, giant reptilian predators flourished. The major subgroups of dinosaurs theropods, sauropodomorphs, and ornithischians originated during the late Triassic. However, for the first 30 million years of their history, Dinosaurs were only supporting actors on the world stage, and in many ecosystems were outnumbered and outmuscled by cruroterzans, crocodile line archosaurs. Very suddenly, about 200 million years ago, all cruroterzans except for the crocodilomorphs disappeared in the midst of a global environmental meltdown, as volcanoes spewed toxic gas into the atmosphere and temperatures skyrocketed. This extinction was one of the big five mass extinctions in Earth's history, and without it dinosaurs might have never risen to dominance. Crocodilomorphia is the technical term for living crocodiles and alligators and their closest fossil kin. This remarkably successful group is the only surviving remnant of the great Kuroterzan radiation of the late Triassic, when crocodile line archosaurs such as Rossusians, Phytosaurs, and Etosaurs dominated ecosystems around the globe. True crocodilomorphs evolved in the late Triassic alongside their Kuroterzan cousins. These proto-crocodiles looked nothing like the crocodiles of today, but instead were small, slender animals that walked upright and could run at high speeds. These animals, called Sphenosutians, persisted until deep into the Jurassic. However, during the Jurassic, crocodilomorphs continued to diversify and many specialized subgroups evolved. These included not only sprawling species that lurk at the water's edge, such as living crocodiles but also an unusual group called Metriorhynchids that lived entirely in the open ocean. The Middle and Late Jurassic are often called the Age of Dinosaur Giants. 
This fitting description pays homage to the evolution of several remarkable groups of colossal dinosaurs, which dominated terrestrial ecosystems across the planet. Foremost among these giants were the long-necked and plant-guzzling sauropods, such as Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus. The late Jurassic was the peak of sauropod evolution. At no other time were these thundering beasts as abundant and diverse. As many as 25 different sauropod species lived alongside each other in the late Jurassic of North America, and today their fossils are common discoveries in the famous Morrison Formation. Other colossal sauropods are known from Africa, China, and Portugal. Some of these creatures were among the largest animals ever to walk the earth, and the ground quaked underneath their footsteps. Many monstrous theropod carnivores lived alongside these herbivores, and probably preying on them. The poster child for Jurassic theropods is Allosaurus, a hatchet-skulled hunter that may have reached lengths of 39 feet, 12 meters, and weights of 4,000 pounds, 1,800 kilograms. Other nightmarish beasts lived alongside Allosaurus, including Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus. Truly, the Jurassic was an age of giants. The skeleton of Hybatus was very robust and more densely calcified than that of modern sharks. The jaws were solid and armed with rows of teeth that were continuously being replaced, as in modern sharks. The teeth measured up to three quarters of an inch, two centimeters, long, and varied in shape some had a series of upright spikes or cusps, while others were low and stubby. In contrast to living sharks, in which the mouth opens on the underside of the head, the mouth of hybatus opened at the end of the snout. In addition to pelvic claspers, used to insert sperm directly into the female, a male hybatus also had specialized spines in the soft tissues of its head. These may have helped the male grip the female during mating. One or two pairs of these spines were situated just behind the eye. Liopleurodon was the apex predator of Europe's seas during the middle to late Jurassic. This monstrous reptile reached lengths of 33 feet 10 meters, making it larger than a modern-day killer whale. Liopleurodon was a plesiosaur, a stout-chested carnivorous marine reptile. Most plesiosaurs were long-necked and fed on fish. However, Liopleurodon was one of the pliosaurids, a subset of fearsome, predatory plesiosaurs with shorter necks and larger heads. Like other pliosaurids, Liopleurodon used its powerful jaws, which were up to 5 feet 1.5 meters along and studded with conical teeth, to spear marine reptiles and large fish. Although hefty, its body was streamlined, and it used its four paddle-like limbs to drive itself through the water. Liopleurodon was an amazingly successful animal, it existed for around 10 million years and inhabited a wide belt of seas across all of ancient Europe. Leedsichthys was first discovered near Peterborough, England in 1886, possibly the largest fish that ever lived possibly the largest fish that ever lived. Leedsichthys was first discovered near Peterborough, England in 1886. Despite its formidable size, Leedsichthys was a harmless filter feeder. Its huge mouth could take in large volumes of water in a single gulp. It then sifted microorganisms from the seawater with gill rakers, or mesh plates at the back of its mouth, just as basking sharks and baleen whales do today. Leedsichthys is classified with the pachycormids, fish that have partly calcified skeletons. Because cartilage does not fossilize well, the lack of calcification means that many of its bones have not been preserved and others are so thin that they are easily crushed. Teeth, however, are more robust than bones, and it has been possible to estimate that Leedsichthys had more than 40,000 of them. Dacosaurus was the largest and fiercest member of a group of marine reptiles distantly related to modern crocodiles. This behemoth was much larger than the other marine reptiles that, along with fish, formed most of its diet. It was well adapted to life in the open oceans, with a streamlined body and paddle-like limbs. However, unlike many of its relatives, which had tubular snouts, Dacosaurus had a deep skull that resembled those of predatory dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus. Its teeth were also similar to those of theropods, as well as modern killer whales. They were large, narrow, and covered with an array of sharp serrations, perfect for cutting flesh. Ceratosaurus was a formidable and frightening predator. Its name horned reptile is a reference to its rounded nasal horn, but it also had tall triangular or rounded horns in front of its eyes. It had a large, deep skull that was well suited for a life of preying on large animals. Unique among theropods, Ceratosaurus had a continuous row of flat bony plates known as scutes running along its neck, 
back, and tail, which was deep but narrow. A small, lightly built predator, Ornitholestes ate small animals, such as insects, lizards, frogs, and dinosaur hatchlings. Its front upper teeth were particularly long and, unusually, had flattened tips. The shape of the bones at the snout tip once led to the suggestion that it might have had a nasal horn, but new observations have shown that this was probably not the case. Its three-fingered hands were long and slender. Ornitholestes was almost certainly covered with filament-like feather. Dryosaurus was a medium-sized, bipedal ornithopod with short arms and tiny hands. Its skull was short and tall, with a sloping upper surface and a narrow beak, which suggests that it was a selective feeder that browsed on leaves. Dryosaurus is the bill known member of a small group of ornithopods called the Dryosaurids. Named after Dryosaurus, their name means tree lizards. Once thought to be close relatives of Hypsilophodon, we now know that Dryosaurids were members of the Iguanodontia, a group that also includes Camptosaurus, Iguanodon, and the Hadrosaurs. Primitive, Dryosaurid-like Iguanodontians that had evolved a variety of body sizes and lifestyles prior to the evolution of the more familiar Hadrosaurs have also been discovered. One of the best known of all dinosaurs, Diplodocus was like other Diplodocids in having 15 neck vertebrae, proportionally short forelimbs, and a whip-like tip to its tail. Its skull is rectangular and ends with a broad, squared-off mouth. Diplodocus had triangular spines along its back, and this was possibly the case in all sauropods. Studies of tooth were suggest that Diplodocus used a feeding strategy known as unilateral branch stripping. A branch was gripped between its peg-like teeth, its head was pulled sharply upward or downward and as a result either the upper or lower tooth row stripped the foliage off the branch. Three species of Diplodocus are currently recognized, and another Diplodocid, originally named Seismosaurus, is now regarded as a fourth, and the largest, Diplodocus species. Stegosaurus the plated lizard is the best known Stegosaur, and was the first member of that group to be named. It's bizarre, diamond-shaped plates have been the cause of much disagreement. But recent work has shown that they were arranged in two staggered rows that ran along the neck, back, and tail. In most other stegosaurs the plates were paired, so stegosaurus was unusual in that respect. It has often been suggested that the plates were used in defense or stout fingers were also well suited for supporting its weight, which suggests that it may have walked on four legs while it fore it. Later iguanodontians became increasingly quadrupedal. Most camptosaurus fossils have been found in late Jurassic rocks in North America. It shared its habitat with herbivores such as Stegosaurus and Diplodocus. And it would have been preyed on by theropods such as Allosaurus. One of the most abundant of all Jurassic theropods, Allosaurus is known for many specimens discovered in the Morrison Formation in western USA. A formidable predator, its large skull and jaws held sharp, serrated teeth, and the three large claws on its hands may have been used to grip the sides of prey. Its powerful jaws and claws, combined with its considerable size, have led most scientists to imagine Allosaurus as a predator of stegosaurs, ornithopods, and perhaps sauropods. Evidence for the fact that Allosaurus fed on these large plant-eating dinosaurs comes from tooth marks preserved on their bones, although like all predators it would also have scavenged on dead dinosaurs as well. One Allosaurus specimen has a hole in one of its tail vertebrae exactly matching the size and shape of a stegosaur tail spike. On this occasion, it seems that the herbivore succeeded in causing a major injury to the predator. The Cretaceous was the pinnacle of dinosaur evolution, and at no point in their history were dinosaurs as abundant, diverse, and dominant. However, in the shadow of the dinosaurs, groups such as birds, mammals, and crocodiles also diversified, setting the stage for the modern world. The dusty, sage-covered badlands of Montana and South Dakota preserve the best record of the final act of the age of dinosaurs. Here, the Hell Creek Formation yields spectacular fossils of Tyrannosaurus, Triceratops, and Edmontosaurus, some of the last dinosaurs to survive before a sudden asteroid impact 65 million years ago. One of the most extraordinary and important discoveries of modern paleontology is that birds evolved from dinosaurs. The closest relatives of birds are theropods such as Velociraptor and Deinonychus, swift, sleek keen predators with large brains and high metabolisms. More recently, even closer relatives of birds have been found. These include raptors such as Microraptor, which were small, lived in trees, and probably even glide or fly. Indeed, 
Today there is barely any distinction between the most bird-like dinosaurs and the earliest true birds, all of these animals were small, brainy, covered in feathers, and capable of flying. Put simply, the dinosaur bird lineage is one of the best examples of a major evolutionary transition in the fossil record. The oldest true bird is Archaeopteryx, a crow-sized flyer known from a handful of spectacular fossils from the late Jurassic of Germany. In many ways Archaeopteryx is half bird and half dinosaur, like dinosaurs it has teeth, claws, and a long tail, but like birds it has broad wings with asymmetric flight feathers and a brain adapted for powerful flight. Bird evolution kicked into high gear during the Cretaceous, as exemplified by the wonderful menagerie of feathered fossils from China's Liaoning province. These fossils belong to an array of groups, primitive birds little changed from of strange and wholly extinct groups, and even early representatives of the lineage leading to modern birds. Clearly, birds were the dominant flying creatures of the Cretaceous, and after the dinosaur extinction they continued to diversify. Marine ecosystems went through a remarkable period of change during the Mesozoic. This massive reorganization occurred on all levels, from primary producers all the way up to top predators. Large predators such as sharks and mosasaurs spread around the world, and bony fish became astonishingly common. The changes were not limited to vertebrates, and, in fact, many of the greatest changes involved invertebrates and microscopic organisms. The major modern groups of planktonic microorganisms the primary producers that form the base of every oceanic food web originated and diversified during this time. Meanwhile, archaic invertebrates that were common during the Paleozoic, such as crinoids and brachiopods, were marginalized, and more modern groups such as clams, scallops, and heavily armored gastropods exploded in abundance. The reasons for these changes are complex, but are likely to involve predation pressure from newly evolved giant predators, such as some sharks, as well as continental breakup and changes in sea level and ocean chemistry that are poorly understood. The extinction of the dinosaurs has been one of the greatest mysteries of Earth's history. What could cause such a successful group to die off? 65 million years ago a massive asteroid struck the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Most scientists think that this impact set in motion a chain reaction of environmental disturbances, such as tsunamis and acid rain, which spelled the end for the dinosaurs. The largest known bony fish, Xyphactinus, was a formidable predator. It had a long, well-muscled body with a backbone of over 100 vertebrae. This, and the deeply forked tail, indicate that it was a powerful swimmer and probably pursued its prey rather than ambushing it. The upturned lower jaw could gape widely, allowing it to consume large fish and possibly small marine reptiles. A 612 feet, 2 meters, ichthyodectic fish has been found in the fossilized stomach contents of a 13 feet, 4 meters, Xyphactinus. In turn, Xyphactinus have been found in the fossilized stomach contents of a shark, suggesting that, despite its size and ferocity, it was not the top predator in its ancient ecosystem. Squalacorax means crow shark. Like Crotoxorhina, it is an extinct member of the mackerel shark group. It had a typical shark body shape, and its teeth were similar in outline to those of a modern tiger shark. It was a top predator and probably fed on mosasaurs, turtles, and fish. Isolated teeth have been found alongside a skeleton of Crotoxorhina, which suggests it may also have scavenged on the carcasses of its larger cousin. Lepososteus, Gar Pikes, first appeared about 110 million years ago. Today they are found in freshwater habitats in North and Central America and Cuba. They are similar in appearance to lizardfish, and it is possible they evolved in parallel to suit particular niches that existed in both saltwater, lizardfish, and freshwater, gar pike, environments. Modern gars, such as L. oculatus, have changed little from their early Cretaceous ancestors, which makes them living fossils. Beelzebufo, devil toad, was only discovered in 2008. Its most remarkable feature is its size, which is far larger than any other known frog or toad, living or fossil. It would have coexisted with the last dinosaurs, and been large enough to eat their newly hatched young. Beelzebufo is a close relative of the living South American horned frogs that ambush their prey, using their huge mouth and the large, fang-like spikes of bone in their jaws to grab small animals as they pass. Its resemblance to modern South American frogs, rather than living Madagascan frogs, is yet more support for a past connection between South America, India, and Madagascar in the Cretaceous. Hesperornis, meaning western bird, was a large, flightless seabird with tiny wings, massive feet, and a toothed bill. 
first named in the 1870s, it is the best known member of a group known as the Hesperornithines, most of which were flightless. The wings on Hesperornis were so small that the hands and even lower arms were absent, and only a small, rod-shaped upper arm bone remained. The legs were placed far back on the body, as they are in modern birds that swim underwater. The toes were long and could close up tightly when the bird was pulling its leg back toward its body while diving. Skin impressions preserved with one specimen show that the toes were not webbed paddles but had large, fleshy lobes projecting from their sides. Mouse-sized Eomea is currently one of the oldest and most primitive members of Eutheria, the mammal group that includes modern placental mammals and their fossil relatives. Its name means Dawn Mother, reflecting its crucial position within our own family tree. Eomea is from the Ishian formation of Jihol, China. Like other fossils from this site, the outline of Eomea's body has been preserved. Its bones are surrounded by a thick coat of fur, and its long tail is covered in short hairs. The hands and feet of Eomeo were similar to those of modern climbing mammals, such as possums and dormice, so it is thought that Eomea clambered about in bushes and trees. Tall, sharp points, or cusps, on its teeth suggest that it was a predator of insects and other small animals. Elasmosaurus was one of the last plesiosaurs. More than half its total body length was made up of the neck, which contains 71 vertebrae more than any other animal that has ever existed. This was a source of great confusion for Edward Drinker Cope, who described the first specimen in 1869, because he placed the head on the end of the tail, which he had misidentified as the neck. Elasmosaurus had a relatively small head and probably ambushed fish by maneuvering its neck. Its long, narrow teeth would have been perfect for piercing and trapping small, soft prey. Named after Kronos, a titan of Greek legend, Kronosaurus was among the last of the giant pleosauroids, a group of plesiosaurians with large heads and short, stocky necks. However, recent work shows that Kronosaurus was not as enormous as was once thought and its estimated length has been reduced from 39 feet, 12 meters, to 30 feet, 9 meters. Like other pleosauroids, it used four large flippers to swim, but whether it used these to row like the oars of a boat or fly underwater like a sea turtle is not known it is possible that the answer is somewhere in between. For about 20 million years during the late Cretaceous the oceans teemed with one of the most spectacular groups of predators to ever evolve, the Mosasaurs. These were gigantic relatives of today's lizards and snakes, that were adapted for life in the sea. Mosasaurus was a voracious, crocodile-like hunter that swam by undulating its long body. As a result, it was incapable of swimming fast over long distances, but it could accelerate very rapidly when required. It probably lived in the well-lit surface waters of the oceans, hunting slower moving prey. Its bite marks have been found on ammonites and on the shells of large turtles, suggesting that it was capable of catching sizable prey. The first Mosasaurus skull was discovered in 1774 in Maastricht, Holland, in a limestone quarry. During the late Cretaceous, North America was almost cut in two by a vast inland sea that stretched from the Arctic Ocean all the way to the present-day Gulf of Mexico. A strange menagerie of prehistoric life inhabited these warm waters, including enormous fish, toothed birds, and a colossal turtle called Protostiga. It was one of the largest turtles ever known, reaching lengths of around 94 feet, 3 meters, and weights over 500 pounds, but it was only the second largest turtle of the Cretaceous, after Archelon. Protostiga was fully marine and rarely ventured onto land. Its limbs functioned as effective paddles, and its thick shell was relatively light and streamlined so that it could travel quickly through the water. The skull of Protostiga was characteristic of a turtle, it was short, wide, lacked teeth on its snout, and sported a sharp beak. The name Dinosuchus means terror crocodile and for good reason. Along with Sarcosuchus, Dinosuchus was one of the largest crocodilomorphs to ever live, weighing up to 10 tons, 9 tons. However, it lived much more recently than Sarcosuchus and is a member of the alligatorid family that also includes the modern alligators. It was one of the most ferocious predators of the North American coastal regions, and in some areas overlapped with Tyrannosaurids such as Daspletosaurus. In these ecosystems it was Dinosuchus, not the Tyrannosaurids, that was the largest and most powerful predator. Its anatomy and overall body plan was very similar to that of living crocodiles, 
so it is easy to imagine it as a giant version of living species. It probably hunted in a similar way to modern crocodiles, by lurking around the water's edge and preying on fish, marine reptiles, and the occasional land animal. Pteranodon soared across the shallow seas of North America during the late Cretaceous. It is likely that it flew and hunted in the same way as an albatross. Vast flocks probably glided over the ocean while looking for fish in the surface waters. It is certain that they ate fish because fish bones have been found in the fossilized stomach of one specimen. The skull of Pteranodon was also well adapted for fishing, with long, toothless jaws and a streamlined skull for diving into the water. The colossal late Cretaceous pterosaur Quetzalcoatlus was the largest flying animal of all time. Its wingspan was larger than many small planes, and its 8 feet, 2.5 meters, skull would dwarf even the tallest basketball players. Despite its monstrous size, however, Quetzalcoatlus weighed no more than 550 pounds, 250 kilograms, thanks to a complex system of air sacs inside most of its bones. For a long time scientists thought that most pterosaurs ate fish and spent much of their time gliding over the sea, only venturing over land to catch small mammals and lizards. However, it is now believed that Quetzalcoatlus and its Azdarkid relatives may have spent most of their time flying over land and targeting large vertebrates as prey. It is likely, therefore, that Quetzalcoatlus fueled its enormous metabolic needs by stalking and feeding on dinosaurs. Albertosaurus was closely related to another North American Tyrannosaurid, Gorgosaurus. In the past, it was thought that these two were similar enough to be included in the same genus. However, they are currently regarded as distinct because they differ in various skull details. Albertosaurus also seems to have had more slender hind limbs and proportionally smaller forelimbs than Gorgosaurus, but both were similar in size overall. There is an Albertosaurus bone bed that contains the remains of numerous juvenile and adult individuals, a discovery that suggests that Albertosaurus was a social animal. Edmontosaurus, one of the largest and best known of the duck-billed dinosaurs, lived in North America during the late Cretaceous. Edmontosaurus, meaning Edmonton lizard, was named after Edmonton, in Alberta, Canada, where the first fossils were found. A crestless hadrosaur, the bones at the front of its long jaws flared out sideways, forming a duck-like bill used to grab and crop large mouthfuls of vegetation. The term duck-billed dinosaur was originally coined for this species. As in other hadrosaurs, the jaw tips of Edmontosaurus were toothless, and its hundreds of teeth were arranged in tightly filled batteries on both upper and lower jaws. Huge, hollow areas surrounded the nostril openings. The function of these hollows is unknown, but they might have housed balloon-like sacs that the animal could inflate at will. These facial balloons would have enabled Edmontosaurus to make sounds, which may have been used to attract mates, signal to other members of the herd, or threaten rivals. One of the best known of all dinosaurs, the Triceratops is familiar to most people, with its large neck frill, two long brow horns, and a short nose horn. The neck frill lacked the large openings that were normally present in that of most horned dinosaurs. Small, triangular bones lined the edges of some frills, but these were absent in many specimens. Injuries preserved on skulls show that individuals sometimes fought among themselves, perhaps over mates or territory. Some specimens preserve bite marks made by Tyrannosaurus, and one Triceratops even seems to have had one of its brow horns snapped off by a Tyrannosaur. About 15 Triceratops species have been named over the years, all of which were distinguished based on differences in horn shape and size. However, these differences now seem to represent the sort of variation seen among individuals of the same species, and only two species are currently recognized. The genus Tyrannosaurus contains the most famous dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus rex. Originally discovered in Montana's late Cretaceous Hell Creek formation, it was widespread throughout western North America. Tyrannosaurus was one of the largest ever terrestrial carnivores, but whether it was an active hunter or just a scavenger is a subject of much debate. Worn tooth tips and bone fragments preserved in its fossilized feces indicate that it routinely crushed and swallowed bones. Some scientists have argued that this, along with the fact that its arms were too short to grip prey and that it is believed to have had a highly developed sense of smell, supports the idea that it was a scavenger. However, most paleontologists believe that Tyrannosaurus was probably an opportunistic carnivore that was able to actively hunt for prey when it needed to.